His brother, his, his... Who is he? You have to identify and say dates. My father, David Van Vactor. I am David Van Vactor, also. David Landreth Van Vactor. His middle name is Glenn, David Glenn Van Vactor. I think that's on his birth certificate. Great American composer. The composer and many people thought the best flute player in, 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 in the United States. Born 1906. 1906. Died in 1994. <clears throat> his brothers, I mean his sisters. We're focusing on what he did for the State Department. All right. Just no. try and be concise. Please, David. He, he was sent to South America. The, in a woodwind quintet with John Barrows and uh, <clears throat> Alvin Epler and a bassoonist and um, the three others, all of them composers. The bassoon player wrote 12 count music and I do not remember his name. John Barrows was one of the greatest horn players ever the world has ever seen. And they were, it was sponsored by Nelson Rockefeller. They were sent by the State Department. They had 46 <coughs> concerts in places like Trinidad, Mexico City, Santiago de Chile, Lima, Peru, and uh, Buenos Aires, Argentina. And my grandfather, who belonged to a club outside of San Francisco, which, which, which was to which a number of men, prominent men, lawyers, and, and others from the San Francisco area belonged. I forget the name of that club. A very, very elite club. A lot of ambassadors to the United States were, and to other foreign countries were in that club. There would have been a club of people like George Schultz of Spectral Corporation would have, would have belonged to. <clears throat> My grandfather contacted all his friends who were ambassadors to South America and 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 uh, they uh, he wrote letters he got letters from all of these people who were in, in the diplomatic corps um, leaders of industry in, 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 in San Francisco and in California and Letters were sent ahead to Argentina, to Buenos Aires, Argentina, so that when the Woodwin Quintet arrived on a Pan Am flight, the red carpet was rolled out, and the, all the embassies were informed, their cultural attaches, and everything was done to make their trip as successful as possible. Warm welcome, treated like royalty, really. These uh, five art composer musicians in the American Woodwind Quintet. <clears throat> he later went in a cultural exchange program sent by the State Department to Santiago de Chile. In a, uh, <coughs> It was, the year, it was his 59th year. He went for a whole year to Chile. He gave 10 concerts and two flute recitals with Federico Heinlein of all the, the um, music for flute and harpsichord written by Johann Sebastian Bach. And gave 10 concerts, concerts up from the, the far north of Chile, La Serena to Orsono. In the, in the south, and also in Concepcion, which had a large German 
population, he conducted the symphony orchestra in Concepcion, and then all the other Chilean orchestras from the far north to the south. And you know what a long country it is, stretching down the continent of, of, of South America <coughs> to, um, to the um, Patagonia, the, uh, it's called the La Fuentes, uh, um, <coughs> see, um, it's the, it's the place of fire where the, the sun sets, uh, set, and um, <coughs> he went there for, with my mother, and uh, for these ten months, it was a very exhausting trip for him. He got a very bad uh, uh, dysentery caused by uh, parasite, paramecia. He had sciatica. When he came back, he looked like he had aged 10 years. Uh, I mean, he was just pale and, and, and weak from the fatigue of this trip. And when he was there, he had the Archbishop of, of, uh, of uh, Chile, the um, brother of Maiga um, Letelier, who was Archbishop, do a novena for, for him that he could be brought back to full health. And after being home in Knoxville, Tennessee, and starting to teach and conduct the orchestra, soon he left his old self. He always looked about 15 years younger than he actually was. Um, <coughs> Smoking and drinking, and, the, and all these, with all the self indulgence of smoking three packs of cigarettes and drinking probably about 17 ounces of hard liquor a day, and as well as beer, and he never drank very much wine. Just a lot of water, um, tea. He didn't drink coffee after a certain point, it made him too nervous. He, um, came back to, to, to Tennessee, to our, our house on the Tennessee River, with my mother. And uh, <clears throat> I had gone to Jamaica with her for a vacation and saw her off in Miami to go to South America. And come down from New Jersey, where my, uh, and my family, and Anita and David, who was about four years old at that, five years old, or going on five years old at that time. And I went to Jamaica with her, and in Miami I saw her off on the plane to Chile. It was a long sojourn abroad in, in Santiago de Chile. She had been there in 1945. He had gone with the Wigger Quintet in 44, brought our whole family, my sister, Adrian, better called Raven. She renamed herself Raven Harwood. She had been Adrian Van Vactor. She brought me, my sister, and my mother down to Chile. We flew first to Panama and Pan Am, then to Lima, Peru, and then finally to Santiago. It was a five day trip. It was during the war. You know, Heavy a military presence in Panama. Um, searchlights trained on their clouds for any kind of any possibility of, of German planes or enemy planes, and uh, very tight uh, security. Very big presence, military presence. Not so much in in Panama as it was in Santiago. And uh, it was interesting that this kind of cultural exchange would go on during the war. And uh, the, the South American countries were strong allies, and there, there was some apprehension and awareness that, that the uh, German government, the Nazis, military would try to 
occupy certain South American countries like Mexico or one of the South American countries like uh, Brazil or, or Paraguay or Argentina. I don't know for a fact that that ever happened. I know there was a thread of that in people's minds. Um, <clears throat> We were there in Santiago de Chile in 1945 for six months. I was seven years old. I learned how to speak Spanish very fluently to the extent that I could get our cook, Aurora, which means dawn in, 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 in Spanish, to make both a chocolate meringue pie and a, mer a lemon meringue. I explained this all in Spanish, and uh, she was always there when I came home from school. Always had a sandwich of um, either whipped bread, butter, and um, marmalade, or avocado spread on top of the bread and butter. And, uh, had that every day for my snack that I, when I came home from school. She, she made a cook for uh, the family. We lived at, at a, a, a street called Enrique Nerkel, so I think he was some Chilean political hero, Ner Nerkel, so sounds like a French name to me. I wrote a poem about our street, Enrique Nercasa, and um, <clears throat> it's about my friends and I finding a loaf of bread on this this on in the in the street, and a an old uh, bum homeless man trying to to get, grab hold of this, he was so hungry to gra grab hold of this, this uh, loaf of bread that had been in the street, and we, like rather cruel, mean-hearted boys, treating it like a soccer ball and trying to keep it, keep it, a, a, keep it away from him, kicking it back and forth, and he grabbed, tried to grab it, finally, when he got the, he put it in his lap, it was inedible by that time, been kicked around on the on this on the concrete and uh, or whatever whatever covered this that street. Anyway, one of my father's best friends was uh, in the in the in the uh, embassy in Santiago de Chile, the American embassy. Named Everly, very close friend of the king. I don't know if he was part of the intelligence community or what else he did for, for the embassy and the American embassy in Santiago, but he's a very close friend during that, that year long stay there. So sabbatical, it was a sabbatical. My father, teaching at the University of Tennessee, only had to teach the spring quarter at the University of Tennessee, and he had the whole summer off. So they took, they took really from, I think something like February through, to, through sep to September when he had to go back to school and start, and start teaching the, the fall quarter at the University of Tennessee, and also start his symphony season with the Knoxville Symphony, which he taught for 25 years. I mean, conducted that orchestra for 25 years and uh, taking it over as an amateur orchestra, which had been founded by Bertha Walburn Clark, whose husband, Harold Clark, played cello in the orchestra. And Bertha Clark played a uh, principal viola, or played, or Principal second violin. Concert master was William Starr, 
for whom my father wrote his violin concerto, and also the second quartet. They had a pretty good string quartet. I remember the recordings of that second quartet was really beautiful. Uh, I haven't heard that for years. More, more recently, I heard his first quartet, which was commissioned by Jack Gordon of the Chicago Symphony Orchestra, and uh, was played 60 times around the country by the Budapest Quartet. That was um, 1945, I believe he wrote, wrote his uh, first quartet, or 1940. I'm not sure of that day. Uh, should be on YouTube soon. I've asked for his publisher, Roger Rhodes, to get it on YouTube, but I don't know if he's done that. On YouTube, you can hear his Sinfonia Breve, a, sh a short piece written in 12 tone technique, using 12 tone technique. One of my favorites, it has a time signature of 18 8, and it's marked toward the end, uh, before the, 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 the coda, the, 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 the ending crescendo. Poco a poco a molto. But it, it's a very interesting time signature. It's, it's like a, it's like it's a variety of six to eight time or three four time. Eighteen eight. He told me my father told me that the number nineteen was was in his mind constantly while he was writing that. He write, wrote that uh, that beautiful piece. Which is posted was posted online by somebody, I mean on YouTube by somebody in Amsterdam, Holland, uh, about a year ago. It's a fabulous piece, I think, very powerful. He gave, I think, a premiere of that that piece in Santiago, Chile, with the National Symphony Orchestra of Chile, on that trip. One of his ten symphony concerts that he gave, and um, then he and Federico Heinlein, the harpsichordist, came back and they gave a recital. The two of them, having given ten recitals together in, in Chile. I like to tell a story about some of the things my father and I did together as father and son. <clears throat> One February, we noticed that our, the men who, of the Howell Nursery, who planted our beautiful Texas rose uh, climber growing up the side of our house, our stucco house, which was built like a Norman house with exposed timbers by Norman Mason, which we bought in 1947 when we moved from Missouri and from the Midwest to Tennessee when my father became, was, was uh, hired to Start a fine arts department at the University of Tennessee. We can do a separate video because we're. This is we don't want these videos too long. This is going to be about twenty minutes, and it's better to keep. Well, I I covered the the uh, trip the uh, trip sent by the State Department. World War Two, post World War Two mm -hmm. period. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Or during the World War Two. 